the paranoia of the narcissist in action. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. As the saying goes, just because you're paranoid, it doesn't mean they're not out to get you. Everybody can experience paranoia. A belief that there's going to be some form of persecution. That people are talking about you. That people are out to get you. Paranoia manifests in lots of different ways from an illogical-based belief from somebody that perhaps their friends are talking about them, which doesn't happen very often. They just intermittently feel that way. To paranoia, which is enhanced by perhaps the intake of particular drugs. Certain mental conditions involve paranoia, such as paranoid schizophrenia. When it comes to the narcissist, paranoia is very much a fundamental part of the makeup of the narcissist because it links into the issue of control. As I've made abundantly clear, the narcissist is created in the crucible of the issue of control. Having that genetic predisposition towards becoming a narcissist allied with a particular lack of control environment, the narcissist is hypersensitive to control and therefore always needs to be subconsciously scanning the situation, watching for potential threats to control, having a hair-trigger sensitivity to the responses or lack of response from individuals which denotes a threat to control. And paranoia has been built as part of the narcissist's armory as a means to compel the narcissist to seek that control. By considering that people are out to get to the narcissist, by wondering what those people over there are talking about, by querying, why is he looking at me? All of that compels the narcissist to continue to seek control. The paranoia is a device which aids the narcissist in the pursuit of the prime aims. The level of paranoia will vary from narcissist to narcissist, invariably linked to the school. Certain narcissists see a problem around every corner. Other narcissists are alert to potential problems, but only ascribe them to individuals who are viewed as proficient enough to cause those problems in the first place. So, for instance, a greater narcissist would not be particularly concerned about the activities of the hoi polloi, but rather their paranoia would link to perhaps to somebody that is their right-hand individual, or a particular business rival that they would regard as seeking to do them down. The paranoia manifests in a lot of different ways in terms of telling the narcissist how somebody else is behaving as it goes through that distortion field. In many instances, of course, in order to compel the narcissist to act upon the paranoia to gain that control, there isn't actually anything being done from the other person's perspective that is a threat. However, that distortion field which surrounds the narcissist, which is the narcissist's genuine perception of the world, causes the narcissist to see that where you simply look over in the narcissist's direction because you're actually looking at somebody behind them, the narcissist interprets that as you staring at them and challenging them in some way. That where a group is talking in the corner about something completely unrelated to the narcissist, the paranoia causes the narcissist to think that they're talking about them, so that they're moved to go and intervene and say what's going on, thus asserting control over that group. As part of the continued education, of you through real life examples, I'm going to provide you now with a section of footage which involves a male narcissist interacting with his intimate partner primary source. The two individuals are married and they have two very young children. It would appear that the narcissist and his victim had an altercation the previous day during which the police were called. It isn't clear if it was the intimate partner primary source who called the police, or if it was somebody else who did. We pick up the interaction between the narcissist and the IPPS with the narcissist referring to his history with the police. 
This will show you more about the dynamic, but also highlights the paranoia of the narcissist. Here comes the footage. Right, you just don't know, and I'm speaking from experience because I do know very well, very well. You know, why do you think my license is taken away? You know what happens when you get caught with weed? They take your license away for six months. That's the worst. That's it. That's it. That's it. Talk your license away. Six months. That's it. How do I know this? Because my license is suspended. I think it's suspended. Right? I know this for a fact. It's not a joke. It's not a game. It's not some bullshit that y'all playing. You know? I know this for a fact. Y'all playing games, I'm and I've been through this games. shit. Yes, you are. How you want to talk about me smoking weed? I will smoke weed to the day I die. Because I can go to a doctor right now and get any kind of that schizo medicine and, and all that shit. I can go to a doctor right now. They'll hook me up with Xanaxes and all kinds of shit. She had me nold and void. Right now. Why would they give you schizo? Because that's what they'll do. Right? You know? I'm all that shit. I done been diagnosed. Right? I already know. I can walk outside and strangle a guy right here in the fucking front of everybody. And the worst that's going to happen to me is they're going to put me in a sane asylum. That's the worst. I'm not going to prison. I'm not going to jail. All that bullshit. You know why? Because I've been through this so much, right, that I learned how to protect myself as a kid. You know? I can go for a judge. No problem. And with the doctor. Well, you know? He's just not right. You know? I've done this for a long time. A long time. Real long time. So long that I wish I could forget about it. You know? Yeah, see this? This is the warrant that my my last girlfriend put on me as she's sleeping in that bed telling me she loves me. Had a warrant on me for over a year. Didn't find out about that until after I, after I, I broke up with her and went to jail. You know? Got arrested for a, a, a traffic ticket. You know? Wound up going to jail. So come to find out, the very young girl that's telling me she loves me put a warrant on me a year earlier. Been sitting here telling me she loves me. I love you, love you, love you. Write me over family's dinner and all that shit. Knowing that you just put a fucking warrant on me. That's fucking sad, ain't it? How can you do that? How can you sit there and tell someone you love them and you give me a damn minute? Fucking police will come here and try to take them away. And you made it. You did it. Right here. Uh, or public intoxication. Simple possession of marijuana. $569. That's what it cost. And six months of drivers. Takes your license for six months. That's all it is. So when you say and talk, call these police and you talk about this weed and all that shit, you know what they're gonna do? Write me a ticket. Have a good day, Mr. Cohen. As long as I have an ounce or less in one bag, that's what I'll get. And if the cop smokes weed, I wouldn't even get one of these. I've had them just take my weed in bowl and all that shit and have a good day. Because now they're about to go in here in a friend and go smoke my shit. You know, if you ever get pulled over, man, and you're smoking weed, have good weed. Don't have regular weed. Regular weed people go to jail. Good weed people get tickets. You know, that's what happens. I want to fight with you. You do want to, you no, and, and Daddy, quit doing stupid stuff. I'm not going to. You know, quit doing stupid stuff. Answer your phone, I call. Answer my phone. All this is over because I didn't answer the phone. Yeah, fucking ex girlfriend's sister. You know. I fucking showed them though, you know. Right? Like they didn't. Even, they, they didn't even come to court. And I'm sitting back in the back laughing because they're scrambling around trying to fucking get hold of her. And I've already paid them. They're not. They're not getting hold of no one. You know. I'm just sitting there waiting. You know, no, I see them. They're scrambling around trying to get hold of her. I'm not trying you know? to do this with you. I'll wait. You know, then they send their little fucking rookie cop up here, trying to fucking talk me into fucking telling on myself. Until I, I talked to him for a second, you know, I, I'll entertain him for a minute, you know, until I until I realize that he's starting to call, he's trying to go in for the kill, you know. And I'm just, stop. Listen, man, I don't have to talk to you, right? If you keep asking, if you ask me one more question, I'm gonna lawyer up on you, right? Your case, let me tell you what your case is. Your case is nothing. Throw it out. You have no witnesses. You must throw this out. So go over there and talk to that person right there and they're about to tell you what I'm telling you right now. They're gonna throw this out. And this little rookie cop, oh. Go on, rookie. Go on. He goes over there and then yeah, now he has to have out his head and come back to me. Uh, your case has been dismissed. I know, motherfucker. I knew what I was walking myself into. You ain't gonna come try to hurt me. I know what's going on. You know, those girls were never gonna come up. They were coming up. You gotta pay $500 each night to show up here. And, so, and one's a heroin addict. $500 go a long way with heroin. You know, she's probably an old and void somewhere in the fucking corner somewhere. 
you know? And her sister just doesn't want to see me, you know? I've been through this a lot with women just like you. I'm not putting you to it. You know, with women just like you. This right here, Willie, got a ticket in my name. My license got suspended. Didn't even know it. Right? I had to drive all the way to this city, a city I've never been in, to find out that my fucking friend got a ticket under my name and didn't even tell me about it. How do I know? Because they gave me Willie's address. So when I Googled it, comes up Willie's house. One person I know was. Why would, why would Willie's address be on this ticket if he didn't have anything to do with it? You know? Been screwed over a lot, dude. You know, for real. By very people just like you telling me they love me in my face. I'm not trying to you screw know? you over, Jeremy. There's the footage. Now let me give you the breakdown. Well, says the narcissist, you just don't know. And I'm speaking from experience because I do know haughtiness, the assumption that he knows everything she doesn't. Because I do know very well, you know. Why do you think my license was taken away? Do you know what happens when you get caught with weed? They take your license away for six months. That's the worst. That's it. That's it. Take your license away six months. That's it. How do I know this? Because my license has been removed. It's been suspended, right? I know this for a fact. It's not a joke. It's not a game. Not some bullshit that you're all playing. Notice the paranoia. You're all playing. Parties unseen. I know this for a fact. Y'all are playing games. I've been through this shit. Immediately, his paranoia is demonstrative, where he talks about other people playing games, that there are unseen hands making his life difficult. The victim protests her innocence with challenge fuel. I'm not playing games. Narcissus responds, yes, you are. You care about me smoking weed. The victim's perplexed. How am I? The narcissist responds forcefully. I will smoke weed until the day I die, because I can go to a doctor right now and get any kind of schizophrenia, schizo, meaning schizophrenia medicine, and all that shit. Grandiosity, that he can just compel the provision of medicine as he sees fit. I can go to a doctor right now and they'll hook me up with Xanaxes and all kinds of shit. She'll have me nulled and void right now. Victim queries, why would they give you schizo? Narcissist, demonstrating his paranoia, because that's what they'll do, right? You know, I'm all that shit. I done been diagnosed, right? Already know. I could walk outside and strangle a guy right here in the fucking front of everybody. And the worst that's going to happen to me is they're going to put me in an insane asylum. That's the worst. Not going to prison, not going to jail, all that bullshit. Notice that he somewhat believes himself invincible. Part of his grandiosity. No, why? Because I've been through so much, right, that I learned how to protect myself as a kid, bringing up the past. You know, I can go in front of a judge, no problem, with the doctor, ta-da, invincibility. You know it's just not right, you know. I've done this for a long time, long time, real long time, so long that I wish I could forget about it. You know, yeah, see this. This is the warrant that my last girlfriend put on me as she's sleeping in that bed telling me she loves me. Triangulation, bringing up the past. Had a warrant on me for over a year. Didn't find out about that until I tried. I tried until I broke up with her and went to jail. You know, got arrested for a driving ticket. You know, wound up going to jail. Again, the paranoia circulates around the circumstances of what has happened to him that he learns things that people have been doing against him in the background notice also that he's embarked upon this monologue which is another facet of his grandiosity wound up going to jail come to find out the very same girl who is telling me she loves me put a warrant on me about a year earlier been sitting here telling me she loves me oh love you love you love you triangulation right here over family dinner and all that shit knowing that you just put a fucking warrant on me that's fucking sad ain't it how can you do that how can you sit there and tell someone you love them every goddamn minute and the fucking police come here and try and take them away and you read it you did it right here it appears that the narcissist is then making reference to his list of criminal charges public intoxication simple possession of marijuana Criminal behaviour, demonstrating a lack of accountability and sense of entitlement. 
$569. That's what it cost. And six months driver's license. Takes your license for six months. That's all it is. So when you say you're going to call the police and talk about all this weed and all that shit, you know what they're going to do? Write me a ticket. Have a good day. As long as I have an ounce or less in one bag, that's what I'll get. And if the cop smokes weed, I won't even get one of these. Notice again the grandiosity where he believes that he's in effect untouchable by the law. And if the cop smokes weed, I won't even get one of these. I've had them just take my weed and bowl and all that shit and say, have a good day. Because now they're about to go and find a friend and go smoke that shit. If you ever get pulled over, man, and you're smoking weed, have good weed. Don't have regular weed. Regular weed, people go to jail. Good weed, people get tickets. You know, that's what happens. The victim responds quietly, I don't want to fight with you, being conciliatory. You do want, states the narcissist. No, Jeremy, I don't. You're doing stupid stuff. There is again the paranoia in terms of referencing that she's up to something. No, I'm not going to. You know, quit doing stupid stuff. Answer your phone when I call, responds the victim, issuing challenge fuel. The narcissist responds, all this is over because I didn't answer the phone. Yeah. Ex-girlfriend's sister, you know. I fucking showed them, though, you know. Grandiosity. They didn't even come to court, and I'm sitting back in the back laughing because they're just scrabbling around trying to fucking get hold of her, and I've already paid them. They're not getting hold of no one, you know grandiosity they were sitting there waiting i see them scrabbling around trying to get hold of her i'm not trying to do this with like her says the victim i'll wait you know then they send their fucking little rookie cop up here trying to fucking talk me into fucking telling them myself again the paranoia of what he believes is the appropriate behavior of the police officer i'll talk to them for a second you know i'll entertain them for a minute you know grandiosity until i realize He's trying to go in through the keyhole, you know. And I'm... He then makes the sound of screeching. Stop. Listen, man, I don't have to talk to you, all right? If you keep, if you ask me one more question, I'm going to lawyer up on you, all right? Threat. Your case? Let me tell you what your case is. Your case is nothing. Throw it out. Belligerent haughtiness. You have no witnesses. You must throw this out. So go over there and talk to that person right there. And they're about to tell you what I'm telling you right now. They're going to throw this out. And this little rookie cop, oh, grr, go on, rookie, go. Now he has to bow his head and come back to me. Grandiosity. Uh, your case has been dismissed. I know, motherfucker, I knew what I was waking, walking myself into. You ain't going to come and try to hurt me. I know what's going on. You know this girl's running around and we're coming up. They get paid $500 a day just to show up here. Paranoia. And one's a heroin addict. $500 goes a long way with heroin. She probably nulled and void somewhere in the fucking corner somewhere, you know? And her sister just doesn't want to see me, you know? I've been through this a lot with women just like you. Triangulation and paranoia. The victim, I'm not putting you through it, she protests. You know, with women just like you, he continues, this right here. Willie got a ticket in my name. My license gets suspended and I didn't even know it. I had to drive all the way to the city, a city I've never been in, to find out that my fucking friend got a ticket under my name and didn't even tell me about it. How do I know? Because they gave me Willie's address. So I googled it and it comes up Willie's house. Why would Willie's address be on this ticket if he didn't have anything to do with it, you know? Paranoia. Been screwed up uh, over a lot, dude, by bad people just like you telling me they love me to my face, you know. The victim responds, I'm not trying to screw you over, Jeremy. Jeremy. Thus, with this narcissist, we see repeated instances of his grandiosity, where he believes that he's invincible, that he knows what's going on, that there are these forces that are trying to mess with him, his paranoia, that there are people in the background that are looking to cause problems for him vis-a-vis -vis the law, but he knows better. He has them in his eye. He is able to neutralize that as a consequence of his knowledge and understanding. He repeatedly berates the victim by suggesting that she's in on this conspiratorial behavior and that he has repeatedly been screwed over, but he knows what's going on, that these people are out to get him, but he sees them, he recognizes it, and he does something about it. He engages also in the monologue, 
talking and ranting as he demonstrates his grandiosity. Thus, you get to see various aspects of the narcissist, and particularly his paranoia that looms in that particular segment. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for watching.